Hello, everyone, and welcome to the morning session of Cordoba Room. We are going to start uh, in, in a few seconds. So let me introduce you, Andrea Aime and Jordi Garnett. Uh, the, the talk is about the state of GeoServer. Uh, a bit of introductions. Uh, Andrea is open source enthusiast with strong experience in Java development and GIS. Uh, his personal interests range from high performance software, huge data volume of management, software testing and quality, spe special data, that data analysis algorithms. Uh, he's full time open source developer on GeoServer and GeoTools and received the Salt Cas Award in 2017. Jody is an open source developer and advocate working with Geocat. He's, he has over 20 years of experience consulting, training, and building solutions and guiding technology, technology development. Jody is, uh, is on the steering committee of GeoTools and Geo, GeoServer and JTS projects and volunteers as, as chair of the OSGEO incubation committee. So thank you guys for joining and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right, here are the slides. Jody, go. Welcome to the State of GeoSuper. We're going to go really quick because we've got lots to say. Um, we just had an introduction. Thank you very much for that. Heading on to our next slide. Uh, GeoSuper is, at a, at a glance, uh, a Java web application uh, really responsible for publishing your data using as many protocols as we can get our hands on. Uh, the core project uh, is responsible for publishing, and we've got lots of optional extensions and bolt-ons, many of which we'll talk about here today. Uh, just a community update on how we're doing. Uh, we've got our core project steering committee uh, and a relatively small number of uh, committers for this size of project, and we would like to welcome Marco as a new core contributor this year. Um, we also have revamped our GeoServer service providers. Um, as you know, we've got our core contributors responsible for the ongoing health of the project, our experienced providers who you can hire and have a shown history of being able to contribute back to the project. And we also have just additional service project uh, providers. The big change is we've had a policy change where we're uh, formally recognizing these organizations for the roles they uh, play within the community. Move it on. Um, in terms of our infrastructure, um, we're making use of everything we can find. We are still in the middle of transitioning some of our infrastructure from um, boundless to OSGO hardware. Uh, in terms of community modules, we've got an R&D area called uh, community modules. Uh, we've got a large number of incoming projects, uh, some of which will be highlighted in this talk, some of which will, will won't. Um, a few of the community modules are actually outgoing. Our okay. data store is no longer in production, as is the uh, WPS scripts module. In terms of GeoServer releases, it's kind of a rule of two. Uh, we have a stable release and a maintenance release. Uh, we're just in the process of releasing GeoServer 2.20. This talk will primarily cover 2.18 and 2.19, uh, which are active at this time. Um, so just at a glance, 2.19 was released in March. 2.20 should be released in September. I think we're a little bit busy with this project, so it might happen this weekend. Um, the way in which GeoServer releases work is we've got stable for six months and maintenance for six months, giving you a chance to upgrade. Please update. Uh, it's the only way you get the latest um, security fixes and so on. Um, as you go through these slides, please have a look at the key at the bottom. Uh, it highlights the individual responsible for the work, as well as their customer or the uh, sponsor of the work, and the version, it, the functionality is available. Oh. All right. So let's have a look at the new functionality available. We are talking about mapping. Uh, one new functionality that, that we added in SLD is a new uh, vendor option called inclusion that you can add to feature type styles, rules, and uh, symbolizers to use it either only for making the legend 
or only for making the map. This allows us to uh, produce uh, more readable uh, legends without getting in all the technical details that are needed to, um, to get a particular appearance on the map. So here is a very simple example. In this uh, top states map, we have a boundary rule that uh, really adds nothing to the, uh, to the comprehension of the legend. We can mark it as map only and it will disappear from the legend, making it uh, simpler and easier to read. We added the ability to support color map labels in Get Feature Info. So when you uh, click on, on a raster that has been classified with a color map, uh, now the label that uh, classifies it can be included in the in the output. Here we have an example of the label being added to uh, Get Feature Info JSON output, but it's going to show up in all of them. We have uh, a number of uh, modules that graduated from community to extension. MapML is one of them. It's a proposed extension to HTML, which pretty much does what the video tag did for the videos many years ago. Many years ago, we had many ways, technical ways to uh, play a video. Now you just stick a video tag and you're done. And uh, the idea is to create a, a, a map tag that uh, allows the browser to just display a map. And uh, there is a little service uh, under GeoServer slash MapML powering uh, that uh, generation. Uh, some browsers already have support for this, such as Firefox and I think also Chrome, but I'm not sure. And uh, as you can see, by just putting a map element in the HTML, you get your simple map showing up without any further effort. In terms of services, as I said, we have had a number of graduations. We uh, have the WPS JDBC module graduated. It's a status store. Uh, status store stores the, the status of a asynchronous request so that they can be shared across a cluster. So you have NGO server, one is doing something. When a get status uh, request comes to another node, it can go to the, the same relational database and uh, get the, the current status. The WPS download module graduated. The WPS module allows uh, users to perform large extractions of uh, raw vector data, raw raster data, large maps, and animations. And it, has, it is being used by both Map Store and GeoNode for large extractions. The WMTS multidimensional module also graduated. It extends the WMTS with new operations that allow to, to drill uh, into and explore the dimensions of uh, a layer. And uh, here in the screenshots, we are seeing Map Store uh, timeline extension uh, using it to, to figure out uh, how many um, items we have on the timeline and uh, update it as we zoom and pan around. The params extractor also graduated. Uh, the params extractor sh solves a problem that you have when you have a shrink wrapped uh, desktop client that supports only basic OGC protocols, but you want to use GeoServer vendor options. So you can bake the parameters, the, the value of uh, certain parameters in the path and uh, have the capabilities document link, uh, backlink to get map, get feature info and so on using those doctored out path and uh, well, the client ends up using the, the vendor options without even realizing. So here is uh, one example of echoing a parameter. So if we do a get capabilities with SQL filter and a certain value, it's going to be echoed in all the backlinks. And uh, the, the example on the other side shows how to put a parameter in the URL so that it gets expanded into an equivalent SQL filter. In terms of GeoWare cache, we got a couple of uh, news. The GWC S3 extension finally graduated uh, from community to extension. It allows GeoServer and GeoWebCache to put tiles in S3. And we have support, out of the box support, for the OGC two dimensional time matrix set, which is a specification providing a number of uh, well known time matrix sets. And we have some examples of names here on the, on the right and uh, a show of, uh, one, of how one of them looks. It's interesting to see that the name of the tile matrices are just numbers, which is going to make happy the Mapbox clients, since they do expect the Z to be just a number and not a generic string like WMTS supports. Jody, is that you? Sure. Uh, in terms of configuration improvements, 
Um, the big news can make my customers really happy is internationalization. So uh, this allows you to provide uh, translations uh, for title and abstract and contact information. Um, and when you request the Git capabilities with a, an accept language, um, yeah, it, the capabilities document that's produced will be uh, matching up the local requested with the information in GeoServer and producing you a capabilities document, a description of the service uh, in the language requested. And so this is really important for Inspire capabilities. Um, there's also been a little bit of creativity in order to um, provide internationalization support for the styling for SLD. So the title can be localized, as you can see above, but there's a little bit of a challenge with the functions. So there's a new function name called language, which will return the requested uh, local. And you can use that uh, dynamically in your styling in order to map the local to the specific property or literal string you need to look at. And so here's what that looks like on the fly. Um, and you can see the, the function being used. And I think there's an example on the next slide. Uh, so you can see that the language being requested in Italian will come back with an Italian legend, or in English will come back with an English legend. So this is going to be a really, um, uh, yeah, people have been looking forward to this functionality for a while. And the same functionality is available for the raster legends. In terms of community building, um, just a reminder, if you do find a vulnerability, please uh, follow our responsible disclosure policy. I also wanted to give out a shout to Ian Turton. Uh, Ian Turton has been working on fixing a lot of the reported security concerns. Um, so uh, we are hearing you. Uh, in terms of developer participation, we are still concerned that GeoServer relies uh, on such a low number of people. So we're actively recruiting developers. Please stop by. Um, we do want to continue to reach out to downstream projects specifically to test release candidates and catch regressions. And as mentioned earlier, we revamped our service provider pages in order to reward uh, service providers who are act actively participating uh, in our community. And we're also going to experiment with um, a cost recovery model for code sprints. We've seen this practiced in other OSGO communities and We'll give it a go and see if uh, helping to cover costs uh, can encourage uh, sprint participation. All right, so uh, now we are going to talk about a few modules which are now in community, and so they are coming soon to a layer group uh, near to you. Uh, sorry, a, a GeoServer near to you. This one is uh, about layer group styles, which is actually going to be core, not community, and it's going to land in 221. Mm, there's a potential backport to 220, but it has to be discussed. The idea is to have uh, the, uh, the same layer group show up in different styles, and uh, you can uh, decide which style to use uh, during a get map, and the styles are going to get advertised in the capabilities document. This is an example from Ordnance Survey Master Map, which is made of uh, six layers with four alternative styles. Also in 2.21, uh, we are going to do a, a tweak of the symbologies factory so that you can decide in which order they are played. If you are uh, doing maps with lots and lots of points, uh, the order of lookup of the point symbology providers can affect performance in a very significant way. And this is a map that uh, went down from uh, seconds being uh, taken for display to uh, a fraction of a second and uh, it's the position of all the ships in the european seas uh, made by emsa the european maritime security agency we are working on the windows installer and uh, jody and geocata are working on that so that we can uh, give the, the windows users back the uh, simple installer experience and it has been done using a small contact also, uh, also for GeoCat, uh, we have uh, the welcome page lay layout, uh, which is going to land in uh, probably in 221, which is going to uh, change and uh, be somewhat more aligned to, to what we see with OGC APIs pages. Also, uh, in terms of uh, community modules, we see the appearance of the Cloud Optimized GeoTiff community module, which uh, leverages COG's structure to do efficient reads over uh, HTTP and S3 uh, storages with more uh, 
backends incoming. We have the OGC API community module that keeps on growing with more and more APIs. Uh, we have uh, significant improvements in the GeoPackage uh, production, so uh, a, for producing uh, large GeoPackages, but also to include the styles in the GeoPackage, generalized tables and whatnot. We have a presentation about it, I think, tomorrow uh, that, uh, that covers all this, uh, these improvements in detail. We also have a DGGS community module, and uh, there is a presentation uh, um, today covering all this work. So I invite you to, to join and, and uh, figure out what, uh, what the, these DDGGSs are. Um, we have a features templating community module, which is a pretty interesting. It's a templating system to generate a JSON, GML, and uh, HTML documents that allows you to customize on the fly using these templates, uh, the, the output of uh, WFS and OGC API features request. And we also use it in Stack and Open Search. Stack and Open Search are the um, community modules dealing with the searches of uh, um, um, satellite imagery, and uh, they have been in heavy development during the last year. Well, Open Search was actually there since 2017, but it got improvements, and the Stack API is new for this year. Here is a, a bunch of uh, screenshots from a, an, implement an implementation made by DLR, where the templates to produce the HTML and also JSON have been heavily customized to adapt them to their use case. Uh, we also have a module called the Smart Data Loader, which uh, uh, is going to be welcomed by people that do a lot of complex features. Say that you want to do complex features, but uh, you don't care about having uh, about targeting a particular application schema. You just have your own particular model that you want to expose as complex features. This module uh, basically hits your database, figures out the foreign keys, and builds for you an app schema mapping uh, and a target access schema for you. So you are basically ready to go within minutes instead of spending uh, hours or days setting up all the mappings. For those that instead cannot suffer having schemas and restrictions, I invite you to have a look at the schemaless community module. It's uh, basically a data store that breaks the, the usual assumption that everything has to have a predictable schema. Uh, the data source in this case has to be MongoDB. So we got uh, JSON documents stored in MongoDB. And uh, it's going to work out of WFS and OGC API features, but only for the GeoJSON uh, output format, because the others require a schema in order to work. Finally, we are working on the official Docker distribution. Uh, and uh, we welcome input on how to best make it. Right now, we have two horses in the race, either by uh, one by uh, GeoSolutions and one here by Niels. And uh, uh, we are trying to, to pick the best out of the two proposals. Finally, Cloud Native GeoServer by Camp2Camp Camp and Gabriel Roldan. Uh, it's basically a uh, repackaging of GeoServer using Spring Boot and microservices so that you can deploy each service on a different node in Kubernetes and uh, manage uh, a cluster with different level of scalability for each service. And back to you, Jody. Thank you. Just checking how much time I've got. Um, site. Site is the OGC uh, conformance test suite. Um, GeoServer used to be site certified back in like 2010 or, oh, look, 2012 and 2016. We would really like to be certified again. Um, and we did put together a small contract in order to reintroduce the site tests into our build process and QA process. And um, coming up next, we would like to plan a sprint the last Friday of uh, every week in November in order to directly work on passing the tests and regaining cert, uh, certification. So we will be looking for sponsorship. We will be mostly looking for participants. Uh, so please join us on the GeoSurvey Devel list and join us in November. Um, many folks assume that uh, GeoSurvey is site certified and are somewhat surprised that this hasn't been kept up to date. The only way to get it done is to roll up your sleeves and pitch in. So please help out. Thanks. I think and this might be it. the first year we've finished one minute ahead of time.
three minutes ahead of time. My timer is wrong. Well, Angelos, do you have any questions for us? You are Angelos, muted, Angelos. you are a mute. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Um, so we have a couple of questions uh, from the chat. Uh, about upgrading GeoServer, I'm currently using version 2.18, which runs under Tomcat 9. Do I lose my configurations when upgrading to 2.19 or 2.20? Yes, you do. Uh, we haven't changed the configuration uh, on disk very much, and GeoServer automatically updates if required when you're using a new version. So you don't lose them, actually. Uh, just make sure that you have an external data directory and you back it up when doing the upgrade. If you are using the internal one, then yes, during the upgrade, you're going to lose the configuration. Oh, yeah. So locate it and back it, back it up and move it out. It is covered in the user guide how to upgrade. Yep. Uh, I don't see any other question in the in the chat so far. People are asking if they can get the link to the slides, but that's yep. not a question. Eventually, idea. yes. That, that will be posted, and the video will be posted eventually. Right. Excellent. Um, all right. Just uh, I, I, just one personal question. Then uh, I saw the the cloud native geo server mentioned. Is that going to be um, is, is that going to be part of the geo server distribution or is this handled? It, it's going to be like Docker. It's going to be an all, another distribution of the geo server project. Um, I'm not. I think Gabriel's got a couple talks about it in the program. If you're interested in learning more, I've experimented with it a little bit. I really like the approach that's been taken. Um, you know, he's broken things up into individual modules. Um, yeah. So I'm treating it like another distribution of the core components of GeoServer, just like we've got the Docker distribution. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have the Docker distribution. Uh, we're trying to have one. We're trying to have one. Yeah. Or, or on, you know, we can say that we have multiple because there, are, there is no official Docker image, but there are multiple available on the internet. That's true. So I think we covered the question that I have here. Can we run GeoServer on a Docker container? So yes, yes there's lots yeah. of examples online. Um, and if people are interested in participating, we can make it an official Docker distribution as well. Uh, one other question is, what's the best way to manage multiple environments, testing, staging, production, using Git, et cetera? What's your recommendation? Jody, we cannot hear you. You're on mute. I'm not talking. It's oh, kind of okay. like I'm on mute. Sorry, I, I, I was looking at the wrong video. Um, I can answer this one. Uh, yeah, we typically uh, stick the, the data directory in some sort of version control uh, the, and uh, just uh, check it out in the various environments. The one trick is that typically switching environment, your database hosts and uh, ser external servers are going to change uh, host name, uh, password, uh, user, whatnot. So you can enable what is, what is known as environment parameterization to move these uh, few uh, values into a property file or into environment variables. And then you can check out the same data directory in the different uh, environments and just go. The other approach is um, for the database is to set up your connection pools at the Tomcat level and use JNDI to refer to them. Uh, so there's a few pages in the user guide which are very important, uh, but also very short. So you can't necessarily understand the significance um, it, until you've run into the challenge yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, another question is, when will version 2.19 become the maintenance version? Um, right now. Probably on the weekend during the code sprint. I think I'm going to try and make the release on Saturday, in which case I would, yeah, I would treat 2.19 as the maintenance release already. Mm -hmm. yeah, the next version is going to be definitely a maintenance one. All right, some questions are coming up. Uh, 
Is there an example of uh, I8N configuration files documented in Subware? What uh, languages are already created? So, it doesn't work that way. Uh, right. So there's examples of how to do this in the user guide, but our default data directory is not internationalized. That might actually be a useful improvement that could be made if you're interested. Um, so just use the user interface. I'm not sure if there was a screen stamp on how to do so, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was. Uh, anyways, yeah, there is a drop down. You choose uh, the language that you want, and uh, the, uh, we are using the the languages provided by the Java Virtual Machine, which are a few hundred. Uh, they are a combination of uh, simple languages like uh, just FR and uh, combinations such as FR-CA for the uh, Canadian spoken French, for example. Yeah. And that little checkbox next to title is important. Uh, until you click that, you won't see all the options. You'll just see a single text right. string. Thanks. Uh, some last minute questions. Uh, does GeoServer work with styles from a cascading WMS? Yeah, uh, yeah. sort of. The, the styles from the external WMS are named styles, so you can switch mm -hmm. between them. Also, if the other WMS is publishing um, the styles, you could refer to them in your Git map. All right, I don't see any other questions on the chat. So I'd like to thank you for your talk. And uh, thank you for, thank you for having us. Thanks. <laughs> so we have a couple of minutes before the next talk.